Good morning everyone, my name is Akesh Gupta and I'm with Lightspeed Solutions. Today in this presentation, I will share with you how easy it is to encrypt a user password in an RNSpeed application. To begin with, let's actually look at an existing application. Here's a simple application which has been drawn from this uh, sample database on CRM, a user account, user account role, an account table, and various accounts. And it's a very simple application, out of the box, no customizations have been touched so far. I can add an account or I can add an account uh, type. I can edit a record, sort the data, filter the data, all sorts of things which are pretty useful and comes out of the box. The very first thing we need to do here is to add security, for which we already have defined our database of user account and user role. So let's actually go ahead and run the security visit. We will try to do a couple of things in uh, one go, which is let's add the table for the pages to add the user accounts in our system as well as implement the security which will be under tools application security wizard database level authentication database level authorization we will pick up our user account table every single thing is default the user ID is not username but user account ID we have to make sure that we definitely pick the right columns here the information is coming from user account, the role is role, click next. In this case, I'm, I'm, we are going to select all the pages and say signed in users. So just so that we know system is going to basically definitely be looking for um, security before we can log in. So after having done this and regenerated the application, if I try to go in, I would be prompted for username and password. But just uh, because we know we don't have any username and password defined, let's go ahead and add one record from the back end. As you can see, the user role ID is number two here. So when we are adding a record here, we need to make sure the user role ID matches. So we definitely can see that we have a successful addition of a user role record and a user account record. After every single thing is uh, done, the wizard ran, everything was set. If you try to log in at this time, system will make sure it asks you for a username and password as expected. So we can easily type in our username and password and it should log us in. So now we know that the login ID successfully worked. So let's come to the point where we have to now encrypt the password. In order to encrypt the password, we need to make sure the password is not stored in a clear text and database. What we need to do here is we need to go back to our database design, go back to our user account password field, and the formula for the password column should be changed to say, while reading a record, decrypt the data, password, and it's pretty straightforward. I can just do one more time. I can right click on it, I can say functions, and I can then go security decrypt data and then type in password because that was the name of the field right from your database. So similar, similar, uh, similarly, we can say while inserting and updating record, unlike reading, we should be encrypting data. So as we are sending data back to the database, we should be encrypting it. As we are getting data back from the database, we should be decrypting it. So this works pretty well and we can rebuild it. So after rebuilding, there's nothing changed, so system will not show me any changes. If I try to go in right now and try to create a user account, just have to log in, probably I rebuild the application one time, that's why. So let's go and add the user John Doe. The very first problem that you folks might encounter is that when you're encrypting de decrypting data, system will give you a warning message that the password length is very small, and you are wondering that you only type in 20, you only you typed in less than 20 characters. Why is this error message coming? This is due to the fact that when encryption happens, the amount of data that is stored in the field is more than what it was there before. So if it was 20 characters, let's make it 50 or you can make it 100. The encrypted information may take more space or more number of digits and that's why we have to increase the password length just because uh, encryption will basically add a lot more characters to that. So let's just synchronize it. 
rebuild it. But on the front end, we may only want to show the user they can only type in 20 characters, for which we will go to the page and basically edit the page so that my add user account pages have only 20 characters the field length. We can basically set up here. So I'm not going to go show you that. Just let's just focus on what we are trying to do here. So now we, if we basically try to do the same and uh, add the user ID John Doe. Since we have increased the space for the password field from 20 digits to 50, it should let me in. But of course, I still want to make sure that I'm still logging in and create a user account. John Doe. Of course, I'm just typing in password as a password. You cannot see it, but that's what I'm typing in. And save and close. So we know we successfully saved the user John Doe. And just to make sure we're looking at the database, we can run this refresh button, and there you go. The password is encrypted. The second thing which I want to bring to the uh, folks here is that I'm not sure how many of you notice if the password is encrypted, why was the system letting me log in with an unencrypted password for my ID? It is because the security system is not going through the business layer and it's being uh, bypassed. And that is the main reason why the security logon system does not use the business layer which was encrypting and decrypting. So what does that mean to me? That means that if I try to log in as John Doe with a word password, I will be denied access. The reason being, system is not encrypting before it is basically uh, matching with the database. If I basically type in my encrypted password, system will let me log in. <coughs> and, and as you can see, to cure this, <coughs> excuse me, to cure the second problem, what we need to do is in the sign-in page, the sign-in page uh, code behind file, VB or C sharp, makes no difference. There's an, a button click event. That is the button click event which is being pressed when basically somebody is clicking the OK button to log in, which is right here. Sorry, I just went too far. This is where we need to type in the code, which will say if this is just, just trying to say that if the text is there, we need to encrypt the text before we send it to uh, the database for validation to log in. We have a system base classes, base utilities for formula. So it's base formula utils. And we will call the same function. Encrypt data was the name. And we will pass in the text value. So it's basically doing the same thing that we shared with you, that I shared with you with the data access layer. All The only difference here is we have to do it manually here because security subsystem does not go through the business layer. So now I can rebuild it and try to see if I can log in as John Doe. Let's try that. There you go, it is working. The only other thing you need to do is make sure you edit the main first account whose password you had type in unencrypted and type in, in this case, password123 or some other password, just so that the password can get encrypted in the database so that there's no more unencrypted password for anyone in the database. And of course now, just to validate that this works, I can log in as myself. password123 and I'm in. So this basically demonstration proves to you how easy it was to write the code which is only one line as well as turn on some settings to the formula wizard or formula editor to encrypt the user password in Iron Speed application. This works very well in version 9x. We have validated it many times both C Sharp and VB. Thank you for watching the video and uh, look forward to more videos uh, from uh, all of us here at Iron Speed. Thanks a lot.